your addiction kind of took off in your 20s. And yeah. what did that look like? Like, was it a slow progression? Was it something that happened really quickly? You know, I, I think, um, no, I mean, I think everything always graduates pretty quickly with me. <laughs> I'm a fast learner, but um, I, um, when I started drinking, I definitely, I mean, I was living in Hollywood and we were, it was just like, just different times, you know, every day was something new to do. And I was working uh, pretty close to the boulevard. And so, you know, we, I would work all day and then afterwards, you know, party with friends and, um, and I had a, a really good time, you know, I was uh, socializing a lot. And I think, but I think that when, when it got to the point where it's like, okay, like, um, this is affecting my work and my ability to show up. It's like, that, that's when, when, you know, it started, it started feeling like a problem. You know, at first it's not because it is fun and games, but, um, and I'm like, okay, well, wow, this is really, um, you know, it's, it's putting a dent into my consistency. And, um, and at the time I was, you know, pretty much my tattoo career had, had just really, I started to solidify it. And so, and that to me was more important than anything. And so I, you know, I had at one point made like a pact with myself saying that, Hey, if anything ever gets in the way of, of you know my work then I'm gonna cut that out and it did get to that point where I had to you know have that conversation with myself like hey like how much longer do you want to hemorrhage you know <laughs> how much longer do you want to suffer like this and um and do you want to plateau I don't want to plateau I want to get better you know so um so yeah but I, I think um you know the drugs came in years after I was already drinking crazy and it was just, you know, um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't into opo opioids or anything like that. I was really more into uppers and it was like, oh, wow, this is a good way to keep the party going. And then it just, you know, that magic or the luster wears off pretty quickly. And, um, you know, it, it became, a, a, I got to a point where I, I couldn't function every, without having drugs every 30 minutes. And it's like, um, so, you know, I went from, you know, partying here and there to an eight ball a day. And it's like, so, you know, it, it, that I, I think was probably about like a three to four month stint before I realized like, I'm, this is out of control and, um, I became quite suicidal at the time and everything. So, um, yeah, it, I, I stopped doing drugs before I quit drinking, uh, and then, and then, yeah, and then I, I ended up quitting drinking uh, 13 years ago. So <laughs> I think it's, yeah, I'm going on 14 now. I love that. I'm yeah. on a decade and I'm, I'm like a decade, like, wow. Yeah. Because it's amazing. Those first couple of years, it, you're like, how am I going to do this? Like, I remember just waking up every day and going like, how am I still doing this? How am I going to do this for another day? And I've, you know, in sobriety, you're going to walk through some really challenging stuff. And it's not easy to not have that escape like everybody else. Yeah. It's interesting because you said something at the beginning that touched me. And I thought, wow, yes. You were like, I'm a really strong person. I'm also a really strong person. Like when yeah. I think of myself, I'm like, girl, you have been, made, you've made it through so much. Like you're so resilient. It's amazing. But that's the thing with substances. It's like, it's not a matter of willpower. If it were a matter of willpower, oh my God, then yeah. my life would have been totally different. It, yeah. That's a dream, right? Of like, yeah. well, I'll just have one or, you know, yeah. it might be. And it's like, no, I'm a junkie. I have to put a needle in my arm four times a day in order to get through the day. Yeah. Um, and it just, it was never like that for me. Like the second that I picked up, I was like, this is it. Like, I just need more and more and more of this. And it feels so good. And it's amazing to me that you had the consciousness at the time to go, this is getting in the way of all this. I had to keep going to jail. I mean, I was forced yeah. to treatment. I was like, you know, and even those first several months of treatment, I was like, I don't want to be here. I am not like you guys. I am not an alcoholic. I hate these meetings. My dad's an alcoholic. Yeah. I don't want to be here. So I just think that it's incredible that even in the midst of the cocaine and all of the drinking and all of the partying and the lifestyle of LA, I don't think people, I think people have this idea of LA, 
Yeah. After living in the grind of this, there is nothing, there's no words to really describe that. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, I, I, I do hear a lot of people kind of blaming things on the city. And again, this is part of like, my, um, like, strong belief in self accountability is that this happens everywhere, you know, and, and we have our versions of LA and different micro versions of them in different cities and towns and states across the country and all around the world. Um, you don't have to have the pressure of, um, of Hollywood Boulevard to, um, you know, to relapse or to start doing drugs and and so i i don't know i i don't want to blame la because or the city because i feel like that would be um taking it off my shoulders you know and granted there are so many amazing sober people in la i feel like they got you know they have like the biggest aa meetings out of any place i've ever been to <laughs> i just i think that um AA is a gift. I just want to preface this by saying that that um, the 12 steps absolutely has saved my ass more times than I can count. Yeah. And I'm grateful for um, a sponsor who taught me how to sit in my feelings and be with yeah. myself and to have somebody who just gets it, who, who you know, is empathetic to how hard it is to be sober. Yeah. 